minute delay, so it's going to be gonna say, it's going to be 5 it's minutes. So oh, when we do an audio check, the viewers are going to hear us too? Yes. Mm, what, are they? Mhm. Mm yeah, I'm going to do audio check for cuz I have a mixer and you got everything is to its own channel, so I'm going to test them um each individually. And then once I get the levels, um I'll save a profile so we're good for the future. I was gonna say you should probably do that on like a burnaway account instead. Nah, it'll be fine. It's the first stream of the, the season, so there's gonna be uh things to learn. Yeah. Just to be sure I understand, it's three, best of three. So yes. It's going to be a little while. <laughs> yeah, I've, I mean, they're going to have to test it. It's definitely, a, a, you know, we got to see how these best games work. Tonight? Yes. Oh. I, was, I, was, I, I didn't know it was going to go that long <laughs> for each game. 30 minutes a game. Uh, it's going to be an hour and a half. Maybe it'll end sooner, but we'll see. These I know these guys have already played each other. Um, last I heard, it was a close game, so we'll see. Oh God! Wait, are these the same teams that played in the um, the preseason thing? I believe so. Oh, yeah, it wasn't that close. Oh, wait a minute, are we unmuted on stream? <laughs> no, it's it's all audio right now. I can mute you guys if you want. Oh, okay. No, though. <laughs> yeah, I was watching that game. It wasn't really as close as it could have been. Move up the water. Sounds good. Hello. Hello. Yep.
All right, stream is live. Is it? Let's see. All right, let me check. Yeah, it is live. All right. I myself might be way too loud, um, but every other level should be fine. Um, I don't have any decibel lowering. Uh, it's basically the levels I hear it at should be the levels the stream hears it at. All right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I just hope my mic can be picked up. By... Oh yeah, you're good. Okay. Oh, I gotta add. That's why I don't have any spectating. I think it's good. Oh no, I couldn't. I had it muted. I think I'll be fine. Okay, good. He added me. And I trust your your levels. It should be fine, unless someone says something. Ah, oh, but they say something that's like five minutes for its fix. What? Not showing up. Ooh, I'm playing. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, why is it so loud? I think it's a bit low. No, I'm at the league for me. So I have to reinstall it and all the settings reset. I did raise chat. That was the one thing I have raised, so it should get louder probably like three minutes into the stream. It's kind of surreal hearing the playback. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, and I was unmuted. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair. Oh, my God. You're a bit fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have to unmute it. We're admitted now, right?
Hello everybody, welcome to the first yes. game of the League of Legends no. season for the Maricopa College Esports League. Uh, I'm your caster, Swan. Joining me on the desk will also be Nightwing. Say hello, yeah. Nightwing. Yeah, the birds are taking over this uh, broadcast right here. <laughs> we have a Kali band that's probably targeted towards the mid lane. Very good band. Camille. And top lane was really a big, big factor in the last game. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Jin or a Samira ban. Okay, I'm having a hard time. Uh, okay, which team is on red side? Because I didn't pick that up, if you remember. Who's on red side? Uh Red side is going to be Phoenix College Nappers, while okay, blue side so, is okay. DM. Okay, so Nappers is on the red side, and DM is on the blue side, just so that the audience can know uh, who's who, so you're not confused as me. Okay, so we got, we're almost done with the first round of bands. How are you feeling about this, this Echo ban? Echo is a very strong laner. There is the Jin ban that I was expecting. Um, I expect uh, Blue to prioritize that Pantheon pick as they have the first pick. <laughs> Pantheon. All right. What would their game plan be? Because I, you, like you said, these teams played before, in our little preseason little skirmish. I remember Nappers. They relied too much on the. Uh, they were getting destroyed by the Echo, of the M, and he was just cleaning house. Also the Lucian too, which is being picked in. Half yeah. was really really amazing on that Lucian. I did, is it gonna be a repeat of the preseason? Are we gonna see I, something new? I don't think so. I think the deciding factor is gonna be the top lane still. Um, so I'm interested in what they have to pick. We have an Orn, very strong top lane defensive pick right there. Ooh, Yone. Ooh, all right. I don't, I don't like playing against Yones, but I love watching them. So, what do you think about yeah. this Yone pick? Uh, Yone is gonna be a pretty, pretty. Nasty once he gets his items. Um, we'll have to see what what name here uh, has in store. Have the Jana pick. So Jana is gonna be the disengage for Lucian. Protects him really well. Also gives him a buff. Shield him. We're also getting the um, the twisted fade in too. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty interesting. I'm really excited about this mid lane matchup. Because I don't know about you, but I've been playing a lot of uh, mid lately, and I just keep running into TFs like constantly, and it's just so annoying. <laughs> Twisted Fate has good wave clear, um, so I do expect uh, Twisted Fate to have an upper hand in an early game until Yone can get his items. Okay. Here, I would advise Red to ban the Thresh, or maybe even. Uh, no, mid lane. Uh, bending of Nunu. Nunu. Pretty interesting. Uh, I can see what you're saying, yeah, because if that Thresh is able to land his hooks, then it's basically a one team fight, free kill in most cases. Especially in the early game when it comes to keeping this MF out, because oh, MF, if she gets a six first, then it's, it's a massive advantage for bot lane. And that plays back into Janna. Janna can interrupt Miss Fortune's ultimate if she gets in range of her ult. Um, so I'm not sure how this is going to work bot lane, but I'm still, like I said, interested in the top lane. Um, let's see what blue has in store against this horn. They're also banning Evelyn, so... Uh, what could you go in on that? Is Evelyn and Terry but... I don't see a reason to ban Evelyn. She is pretty nasty in the early game, but then she starts falling off. 
And we have a Graves ban. Ooh, oh, they Kane. Kane. Okay. Kane has that mobility. Gets in and out pretty quickly. Pretty reliable. I'm expecting some sort of ranged jungle from DEM. Maybe like a Kindred would be nice. The set top lane. Alright, so I think it's mostly down to this this jungle matchup that could decide it all. Because if Kane gets to have his way with bot lane, which really is looking really high contested here, looks like it could really help out nappers in the long run if they get misfortune fed. But this is pretty interesting. I'll be looking towards that jungle lane. How about you? Uh, jungle lane. Amumu is going to need a lot of help, um, and if Amumu gets behind, um, it's going to be pretty easy for Kane just to get that snowball rolling. I do like the Misfortune and the Sona combo, much more potent than the Lucian and the Janna. I think However, that gives, uh, yeah, uh, it gives the Fortune like more mobility against the Lucian matchups. Because you can just yeah. press E on Sona and just fly away. Yep, exactly. Now, DM does have quite a bit of CC. And Amumu is a decent tank. But if Kane can capitalize on that, uh, Amumu will not be a factor in any team fights. All right. Let's get right into this game. I'm so excited. First game of the season. Let's go. All right, let's load in. Now, I hope the Yone and the Misfortune prioritize some tank-busting items for the Mumu and the set. If a Mumu and set start getting uh, their items, they get a thorn mail, it's game over because Sona is the only magic damage on the Napper's side. Yeah, it looks like there might be using a lot of their early game to just try to pressure top just so that set can win uh, that lane early as fast as he can. Yeah, like you said, so he can get that item. So it doesn't look like bot lane is going to be the priority for Amumu. He's just going to be going in, trying to contest top lane as much as he can. And TF, all he just needed to do is just keep the Yone squared out with his, with his gold card. I, I think that's the only way that he can stop Yone. And then on the Napper side, they do have damage pretty spread out. But is it enough to deal with Set and Amumu? We're about to find out. While on the DEM side, much of the damage is going to be focused on the Lucian. They don't have enough heal on the Napper side to dive through the backline of Amumu and Set. It's going to be pretty hard to uh, focus Lucian. And if they get too close, Jan will just blow them away. Well, that's true, but Nappers could actually have a real big advantage when it gets to the mid game once they start getting these items and start going into more team fights. Because all they need to do is just try to make sure the Janna wastes their ult. And then you got Orin ult, you got Yone, uh, you also got Kane too, Sona R. Like, I think Napper's team comp is really relied around that team game, that team play. I believe the game rests in the CC. Um, so in this case, I am favoring uh, DEM uh, just based on their team comp. However, I am going to keep an eye on that Misfortune and Sona. Because once they get going, uh, Nappers will uh, start turning the tide of the battle. So which lane, I know we said this so many, but which lane would you most want to get fed as fast as you can? On the Napper side, I would definitely focus on Misfortune and Sona. And as for DM, you definitely want to get 
uh, Twisted Fate and the Lucian Rolling. So there's more win conditions for DEM, while for Nappers, it just relies on that bot lane. Okay, so once they get out of the laning phase, how do you think their their early team fights are going to go? Early team fights, uh, depending on the first dragon, it's going to have to be focused around there. And we need vision control down there. Um, but w the level six, I still believe DEM has the stronger level six. The Twisted Fate, uh, once he ults, he has that vision on all of the nappers. Um, spot someone out, catch someone off guard. Amumu can AoE stun, Set can peel off, and Janna can disengage when needed. All right, all right. So, so far, this looks like it's going to be a really exciting game as we finally get into the game. Let's see how this is going to turn out. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see the chat. Uh, if you're rooting for nappers, put a PC in the chat. If you're rooting for DM, let's put DM in the chat. That's right, everyone. Let's go and rep our schools. Support esports along the way, too, and everything. Hell yeah. Wait. Heck yeah, I can't curse. <laughs> <laughs> Is hell a curse word? Uh, we, we gotta get some soap for Swan here. <laughs> I got that, that dirty mouth, apparently. Okay. Ooh. This debate the DM is uh, moving together as a group. Fine. And it goes to Lucian too, which will help a lot. He can get. Uh, what can he get? I would prioritize uh, going to save for a BF sword here. Okay, so it looks he's like he is starting with the tier and uh, the long sword. All right, so yeah, they are putting a lot of focus into this bot lane, so that's gonna be a good start for DM. And also this blue bus too on the invade, so we can see that that was a massive fight for the um, to get that 30 extra gold on Lucian. It does put a Mumu a little bit ahead of the cane. How so? Mumu's just taking, oh, yeah, he just taking his camps buff. overall here on the blue side, and he's just gonna rotate down to his red buff, and if Kane doesn't capitalize and move over to red side blue buff. It's not gonna look very well for him. He might not even know. It's like he's going towards wolves right now. This extra aggression from the Yone in mid lane though, like this TF is really having a lot hard time. Uh, TF is playing a bit safe. Um, he knows that he has to keep Yone occupied. Just focusing on that last hitting here. Yeah, it looks like Kane is near the bot lane, so he looks like he might be able to close in on this if Lucy and them aren't careful. Yeah, I would I would focus on backing as soon as you can, because I don't know about the the level three gank from Kane. And Kane's spending a lot more time roaming around. He is a little bit behind because he's losing that blue buff. I just put Mumu more ahead and in a safer buffer zone for him. Nice. Now onto the top lane. They've actually just been going back and forth, the set and the orange. So 
It's a really close game at this point. You can't really tell who's going to come out on top in that matchup. I'm having some trouble with my client. Nope, Jana is in trouble here. This one's one group for kill. With the flash, is it enough? Switching on to Lucian here. I am real low. They just barely escaped with their lives down here. Going well for the bot lane of Nappers. Okay, I'm sorry. I had some client issues, so it got fixed now, so I missed the whole team fight, apparently. <laughs> Alright, can, can you break down what happened for me? It was just a misfortune and Sona going a little bit more aggressive on the Lucian and Janna, nearly getting a kill, but Janna's gust of wind uh, just barely saved her life. Ooh, and it looks like MF used flash on that, so... If this king yep. can somehow get back and pressure this bot lane from pushing up as far as they can, then they could kill MF and get an early lead. Looks like they're going for their first buyback. Swords for everyone. Kane with three long swords. Miss Fortune has her second long sword. Lucian has his long second long sword and building up the tier. Exactly. Everyone gets a long, long sword. <laughs> Ooh, the Yone going oh in with my, the that was a very Oh my goodness, that was a very close, that was very close. Almost escaped. One for one. One for one, all right. So the Ignite from the TF is able to kill Yone. So that's a pretty good uh, exchange. So not really much loss from either team from that. So this top lane battle, however, the set just forced him back to Orin. Oh, he wants to go in on this set, however. He doesn't really have that much. Oh, boy. Punches. Oh, yep, the Orin in. will he take the him ult. down. Oh, the <laughs> ult from the set to avoid that. He gets a stun. <laughs> set loses anyway. Oh, but that was the valiant attempt from him. He was able to avoid the Ornal using his own ult. That was amazing. Nappers are able to bring it back. So how do you think about this pathing for the cane? Looks like both top laners are going to TP back in. So they want to keep this aggression as much as they can. Looks like Kane's just trying to sniff something out. But here's set. He's pretty safe, but the Moomoo is trying to see if we can get a early dragon down here with help from Lucian and Janna. We'll take a look. Yeah, a little exchange from the mid lane. Not really much happening at the moment when it comes to pressuring a single lane. Most the game's kind of evened up at this point, so it seems like the first turning point will be this Drake that be coming up. Yes, and as you can see, a movie taking that blue buff um, is putting him ahead. He's about a level ahead of the cane. I don't even know if uh, Nappers are aware of what's happening. Things are going down. Yone and Kane are coming down. Yeah, it looks so like Nappers is the dragon. And we get a steal here from Kane. Okay, oh, and just barely gets out. Angle, when the Yona goes in, the is able to get the blue buff, <laughs> not the blue buff, the dragon for Janna's life. But it doesn't matter if we got the dragon. <laughs> well, in the end, that's all that matters. And we do have Cloud Drake coming up next. 
Let's see if they'll collapse on this Lucian, actually. The Sona is Lucian gonna is oh, after the Sona. Oh after. my goodness. Sona had no choice and wasted a flash. The is trying to go in and get his own kill of his own, but he isn't able to finish it. And the MF gets away, so... Just one kill on the side of DM. Just keeping this even as much as they can, but... He can get some breathing room in the bot lane. That's the only thing that comes out of that. And again, that kill went to Lucian. I remember the win conditions for DM would be the bot lane or the Twisted Fate. Looks like they're going to collapse on the MF. Or at least just force her out. Set definitely needs to go back, though. I want to draw your attention to the top lane. Uh, Set has been really pounding on the tower up here. I've taken plenty of plates Ooh. off of Orn's tower. Oh, that was a bad lane attempt from the TF to try to go in for a pinch remove. That's fine. Nothing much came out of that. They were able to get some breathy space in the lane, so. But as long as they're able to keep Kane top, I think that'd be great for bot lane. So they're putting some pressure on this mid lane against the Yone. Yeah, they're not going to uh, get it. It's just have Yone back. I think that's the only thing they got from that. But they're able to get turret planning, so it all works out. Oh, we have a... The Dana, oh, no. Lane. Oh, yeah, the Sona, no. oh, and the MFO. <laughs> oh, no. Poor Janna. There's way too much happening at once here. <laughs> yeah, two ults used, but they got turret plating. And they got two ultimates out of it. So if DEM can take this advantage, or not take, not take this fight, and just recall, then they'll be set. They'll be all right. Uh, Lucian does have... Uh, noon quiver up though, so that's gonna change a lot, especially against the MF who still has long swords and only long swords. Starting to see a gold difference in the teams. There's a huge CS difference between Yone and Twisted Fate. Speaking of which, Dione is going in. He isn't able to get much, but he gets out safely. But TF, TF definitely needs to back. He's getting really destroyed by this Yone in the lane. Just a whole 15 CS difference. That can mean a lot, actually. Yeah, and what Nappers are doing is taking away that win condition for DEM. If you can contain the Twisted Fate, you only have to worry about the Lucian and Janna bot much more manageable for nappers if you can take away the TF. Looks like Kane's looking towards top side. I think he wants to set so that Orin can get more items and he's able to do more. We can see the Orin all coming in. Here. The set. The set he got out with his life. But and he's he's able to get it back up. The Orin has to flash out. But <laughs> I think Kane can finish the set unless he flashes out like that set. Gets away cleanly. Not really much from that end. A flash taken away from the Orin, unless his cane wants to go in. It looks like we got some help coming in from Twisted Fate. Oh, the Stun! The cane! The cane! It just gets stunned and gets a massively punished for staying that long. Nice way the cane but, yeah. now puts. Uh... A Mumu in a better position to uh, get this Cloud Drake. And it looks like they might collapse on Yone too. We get the Q on him. He misses the Q, so it looks like Yone is gonna be able to get out safely. But man, what a what a top lane battle! Yeah, that's one of the lanes I wanted to focus on right there. All right, from that, it looked like Set was able to buy Iron Spike, so that's a massive advantage over the owner because he could just stay in the fight longer. He's able to hit it. the the Iron Spike and do massive damage onto the owner. So, Mumu has yeah. captured the Rift Herald, but the Napper's answer by taking Cloud Dragon. 
Alright, one for one dragon. That's fine. Lucy needs to get out of here though. I'm not I don't Bruce agree with that Sona in. ult. Ooh, the Sona ult was able to kill the Janna, but let's see if Lucian can get out of this. Yeah, with Lucian's dash, he is fine. So Amumu has placed the Rift Herald in mid lane to help this Twisted Fate. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be first turret towards the side of the DM. Lucian got caught out, though. And Yone does go down, and the Rift Herald does manage to get some damage on that inner turret mid lane. In terms of kills that fight, they came out even, but... Napper's obviously with the big advantage getting that shutdown gold on the Lucian. Who did it go to? It went to Yone, right? It actually went to Kane. Kane got the shutdown oh, gold on Lucian. Ooh, now he's got Dust Blade. Ooh, that's gonna spell trouble for bot lane now. Misfortune and Lucian do have similar builds, but Lucian does have the CS advantage. Quickly, he, also has items. he also has Kraken Slayer. It, all he needs to do is just force out the Sona and the MF just by shooting him. That's it. Not really much some MF can do. Almost every single player on DM almost has their first item. Which is really surprising seeing how these team fights have been turning out. Yeah, it's about a 4,000 gold difference thanks to what those towers that went down mid lane and all the plates that Set took down. Ooh, the Yone ult misses the TF. He's able to get out. But ooh, that's that's a, that's unfortunate. That's an unfortunate Yone ult. That hit, though, would have given massive advantage to the Yone. Especially since the TF also has uh, a bounty on him. More gold, more items. Looks like what we got going down here. Set's in a bad position here. And Twisted Fate does take out Kane and Yone for the double kill. And remember, uh, Twisted Fate is a win condition for DEM. This is putting more money into TF's wallet, apparently. Yeah, that's not a gamble that I want to play with. He's pretty good with them <laughs> cards. Too good, apparently. Four and one. Jeez. Yeah, I remember I was saying earlier that I didn't like playing against TF's because this this will this will happen. <laughs> a yellow card, definitely. Yellow card, couple autos, and that's another kill. DM right, like is, is putting the, the hurt and putting that final nail in the coffin for Nappers as they take down the inner turret of bot lane. They're able to force the Yone and the Sona. The Kane's coming back in. He can re-engage on this. Born is leading with his ult, trying to catch the Janna. Hits the Janna. The MF ult comes out. That was yeah, way to too much for the, set. Oh, for the set, and he lived. Whoa. That was way too much commitment from the team just for set. And, and now set is going to turn set around set and slay Kane. Oh, that's unlucky. Poor Kane. The set's oh. going to go back in, though. He has his W up. He gets his son. And he gets the pile driver. He's able to get the double kill on the. Yone, make that a triple kill for the team. Four, and they're about to ace on the Orin, and they can get this dragon. I bet Misfortune wishes she saved her ultimate for that team fight. That would have been much different if she had kept it in her pocket instead of wasting it on the set by himself. 
That was the downfall of the Nappers, going after that set. If you let them go, you would have ultimates ready for this dragon fight. Definitely, they wasted a Sona ultimate and a Misfortune ultimate, which they could have kept when they had that fight just a moment ago. Yeah, and Dan is gonna build a Moonstone. You know, assuming. I don't know and much about. I don't know much about this game, but if I had to guess, that was not good. <laughs> yeah, no, that was not good. They're able to give Lucian Bork, Braille of the Rearing King, and also get some more items on the TF, who still has his bounty, by the way. So it looks like Napper's win condition is to kill that uh, Twisted Fate. So that they can get the shutdown goal and start coming back in. Yeah, for the Nappers, they definitely need to make use of Vione and Kane. Um, they do need some more farm in order to get their weapons. Otherwise, uh, Misfortune, she's falling way behind from the Lucian and she may no longer be a win condition for them. It looks like we got a, a fight here in River. Vione gets the shutdown goal on Twins of Fate. The Ornol comes in, knocks up three, but it doesn't even matter because DRM just cleans house. They're gonna finish the cane and another massive, massive team fight for DEM. Yes, two double kills went to the side of DEM, and looks like they're going for the Baron right now. Yeah, I mean, sure, you got the the bounty on the Twisted Fate, but in doing so, there's three more other bounties on the other three lanes, so. If, if, if they can come back from this, it'd be a surprise. Especially DM with the is uh, it's gonna be pushing the noose on them, definitely. Yeah. It all comes down to how Nappers deals with this Baron take. I mean, not Baron take, Baron push. Now, for Nappers, they do need to be on the defensive. Put down your wards, spot out DM. They near the top lane as well. Top lane is their last stronghold of defense. Mid and bottom have been wiped out. I think at this it's point, they might have some they damage might on that inhibitor. Put, um, farm into the orange just so he can get the second item. Leona, it comes in on the TF, but. Yone is going to get killed because of that. The Kane comes in, joins along his brother. The Sona. Oh, no, Sona. Uh, again, it goes to Lucian. Um, that was tough to watch. I, I, I don't think that's how they wanted that defense to go. OK, so this MF and Orin trying to defend the base. The ultimate comes out from the MF, but they're already attacking turrets. The teleport comes in, too. The Orin ult also gets to. But it doesn't even matter, the set comes in, slams, and jams, the MF, the orange looks like it is GG. Or DPM. <laughs> They're gonna be 1-0 to zero in the game. That was an interesting first game of this series. How'd you, how'd you think of that? I think it went as well as it could have been for DEM. Uh, once they got that kill onto Lucian, the very first blood, uh, they started funneling money into him. And you can see just based on the items, Raid of the Rune King, Kraken Slayer. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was going to go for the Infinity Edge as his next item. Here he has the cloak, the agility, and the dagger. Um, Nappers, they had to uh, reevaluate who they want to ban in game number two. All right. As we wait for game number two, how do you think they're going to be? How Nappers are going to come back into this one after losing that first match? I believe Nappers have to start being in the zone when it comes to team fights and not committing so much resources just for one kill. Um, if Sona and Misfortune had kept their ultimates for that bot team fight near Dragon, I could have turned the other way and they would be the one marching into DEM's base. Well, I think that Nappers can improve 
is the fact that they need to see how these team fights can go before they get actually get into them. Definitely, they have so, to. Yeah, they got caught out three times, I think. I believe they, they, so, they caught a number of times. Yes. Yeah, so as they can play as a team and stick together, then I think they'll be able to come back in this next game. Okay, we're going to take a little break, and we'll see you when the game starts. And drink your water, everyone. Get up and stretch. Yeah, Just wait a little bit. Welcome back, and we're going into game two between DEM and Nappers. Uh, I'm you. I'm the caster Swan, and alongside me is also Nightwing. What's up, Nightwing? Hey, Swan. Uh, again, the birds are back. Birds are back. Birds are back. And it looks like DEM is actually going to be switching to the red side for this team for this game. 
So what do you think of that? I don't think it changes their win condition. Just middle and bot lane. Um, they are comfortable with their their picks right here. It looks like it's gonna be kind of the same of first game. The Lulu band's gonna be coming in, so they don't want the ADC to dominate again like last match. So if they can allow, they can get out that Lulu. There won't be much utility to put onto the ADC as much. So what do you think the the next band's going to be? Well, for Nappers, I'm hoping they would ban away the Lucian. The Lucian, okay. But uh, is that a no ban? It seems so. Uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of weird not actually banning something. That's like that's like solo queue stuff. The <laughs> blue side does have the first pick. Will they take away the Lucian from Red? Uh, we'll see. But like you said, they're gonna want to put all this kind of preparation into how they're gonna deal with this bot lane if they do get out of control. It looks like they'll be going with the Nocturne, the the all in. You can take out any ADC, so. Now, I-20 has been playing Nocturne uh, pretty recently. Um, I'm interested in to see how he wants to uh, utilize Nocturne um, in team fights here. The Janna is going to be coming back in on the side of Nappers. Uh, how did you think Slayer, not Slayer, uh, whoever the support player is, sorry. <laughs> How do you think their Janna was in the last game? Janna did get out of some sticky situations with her Whirlwind um, and with Zaya as her AD carry. I believe it's going to be a very safe uh, bot lane. What's not going to be safe is this Malphite pick coming in. They're, they're going for the all in. Yep, Off definitely. Of the Akali, the Nocturne. <laughs> Definitely uh, three dive heavy uh, picks here against DEM. Looks like DEM's also going to go with the Hecarim. What do you think of that pick? Not a problem. Hecarim is a very fast jungler. He will be able to clear camps much faster than the Nocturne. So, how is the Nocturne going to get an advantage yeah. over the Hecarim? A Nocturne just has to keep on going through camps until hitting level 6, and then I would focus bot lane, because that was one of the win conditions for DEM. Jump on that Zaya, try to get her flash out, and maybe Jenna's ult, and then just go again. Alright, so as the last pick is coming in, do you think it's important that the Akali focuses on join the team fights as soon as she hits six or is it more worth it to start farming even more to get ahead of this yone akali would need to farm uh pretty hard against the yone as we saw last match uh the yone was getting uh, dominated early and it just snowballed uh over and over because twisted fate kept on farming we're gonna see the come in and Perhaps the Affiliates or the Lucian? Or even Samira. This this is actually a really interesting Ah, pick. so they He's do pick the Lucian. The they do pick the Lucian on the Napper side, taking it away. Alright, if it uh if you're not gonna use it, I'll use it. I'll beat exactly. you in it. Beat you with your own game. Alright. Now this so the top lane is gonna be on the top. Is that really that, focus, that much of a focus this match? It looks like it's all focused on that bottom lane pressure. So if Silas does take Malphite's ult, that is gonna make team fights pretty interesting. So what you're saying is the Silas is the one driving point that will help equalize against this dive heavy team. 
That or even Hecarim. Hecarim's ultimate can fear the enemy team, um, pushing them away from Zaya if Jan is not there. So yeah, it looks like they are going to be going up against. So how's the Lucian going to get past all this? Uh, that's pressure. a good question. Um, Lucian has to rely on Thresh's hooks and uh, well-placed lanterns to get out of sticky situations. Um, Thresh's lantern can also bring in the Kali and the Nocturne for uh, some good ganks. So I am interested in what Victor has to show for the Thresh game. All right. Victor is just going to have to be Fallen of Four's Ascendant Guardian Angel as we'll get right into the game after this short little break. We'll 
Welcome back. We're getting right into this game against DEM and Nappers. Nappers on the red side this day, this time. How you doing, Nightwing? I'm refreshed. I drank a lot of water. Hopefully everyone else has drank some water too. Yep, I'm drinking water right now. Refreshing. All right, no invade from DM this time, so not really much that nappers have to worry about in terms of a massive advantage that was part of the downfall last game. So they learned from that. Not applaud them for it. I'm interested in why the Nocturne has bought Hellblade. For those that don't know, uh, Chilling Smite, um, when you cast it on an enemy champion, you do do the true damage, but you steal their movement speed. Nocturne doesn't have any movement speed issues, because he just uses Q. It's probably doing it for the team fights, so that you can get Lucian in to maybe do something so that he can get fed, because that seems like the game plan for nappers. This is the copy of the game plan of DM from last game. Let's get the Lucian fed and we win. Oh, you're right. Uh, it's probably for the team fights. Remember, it looks like Nocturne's gonna be starting red side, so he's gonna be probably looking to just farm. Hopefully, keep the Hecarim off any lanes for as long as they can until he gets six. So far, it's just been nothing but poke. So, how do you think this top lane is going to match up? We didn't talk about the top lane. Top lane? Silas should be able to outfarm the Malphite. Especially if the Malphite isn't going magic damage. I believe this Malphite is going pure tank. To absorb all those hits when they goes in. Yeah, there's a little bit of exchange there, but Orin definitely w not Orin. Like wrong game. <laughs> the Malphite. Still thinking about the first match. Yeah, still thinking about the first match and how insane those Orin ults were. So hopefully he can translate that into these Malphite ults. A little exchange in the mid lane too. Both lanes actually, but it looks like Yone is able to keep out. But on the other hand, Malphite getting a lot of poke onto him. Yeah, Silas is uh, punishing him for uh, being too far out of uh, from his turret. And Malphite can't uh, respond accordingly. Yeah, and he has to be really careful too, especially since his Hecarim is in the top lane and Malphite gets a little little handsy trying to get the Silas to get spell trouble for him. Bot lane, however, the hook onto the Zaya. She has to flash out and heal both summoner spells being used in that fight. So that's a pretty good advantage for the Lucian. Can capitalize and first blood oh. did just go. Oh, oh my. That's unlucky for Malphite. And since Silence is coming down to join the team fight with Hecarim, another fight's happening in the bot lane. The Zaya is going to get taken out alongside the Janna. Two kills oh. for the Lucian. So we're seeing a repeat, but just flipped in this game. Uh, all the gold going towards the Lucian. This, this, yeah, like, okay, good thing my mind was in the last game because this is literally what happened early game on that, except it's just flipped. <laughs> all right, this Hecarim is going down bot lane. I don't think he's gonna be able, he's gonna put pressure on this Lucian unless they push out. The Zaya can get there fast and they could just engage right now. I'm not sure if you're seeing this. Uh, as you can see, the CS difference between Akali and Yone uh, is widening, but that's what we saw from the Twisted Fate. Um, hopefully, what name on Akali can uh, repeat that, but just flipped and we'll have a totally flipped game. This actually is a flip game, so it looks like Red Side wins games apparently. 
Uh, I don't know about that, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Nerf red side. I mean, not red. Yeah, Nerf red side. <laughs> the hecarim is I'm trying to out. look out for the Sakal. Trying to secure this. Hecarim is able to. Which is not a problem. And if you recall, the first dragon of the game, last game, was Inferno as well. This Jenna just barely gets away from dying to dragon. <laughs> I-20 on the Nocturne is going for that Lethality build. I do like that build on Nocturne. It looks like Nappers is okay. going to take that Infernal Dragon. All right, I was having internet problems, but looks like it doesn't even matter because I'm not needed. They're just going to take this Jake before I can even say anything. But <laughs> the Silas, however, he took the Malphite ult. He's trying to look to go in on this. Yeah, that Silas is going to keep that Malphite ult in his pocket, whether it's to flee from a gank or to go in. Okay, so this Hecarim, he does have six, so he could be Lucian to go on to this bot lane and try to get the shutdown gold on the Lucian. Uh, Lucian See, the Thresh E comes out, the ult comes in, he's able to get him, but the shield <laughs> comes out. And Thresh saves his ADC to live another day. However, on the top lane, Silas pushing Malphite back as hard as he can. Malphite knows he has that ult up. So he's just trying to play as safe as he can. Just have the ult run out. Let's see how this goes. Silas. Game of chicken at this point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he missed the cannon, but hopefully he can keep this Silas out. He goes in and he gets a one shot under the tower. I would have. Still going to Silas. Oh, another fight going in the mid. Yone barely escaping with his life. Whoa. Yeah, Kali yeah, is no man. joke to uh, face against. When she gets uh, dashing, uh, it can be lights out for you. Luckily, Yone did escape that. Lucky for you, and I know there will have to be two deaths on the scoreboard for the side of DEM. However, the Malphite was able to get back into lane, but Silas is back in to go buy his items. So that's a massive advantage for Nappers, who are already making a big come around for the last game. Oh, the Nocturne ult comes in. It doesn't really get the Yone he's able to get out with his life, but that's a Nocturne ult that uh, Zaya or Penny flash. Yeah, the flash race on the Yone too, so if Akali can hurry and get back into her lane, she can put some aggression on this. The Hecarim, however, just bullying this Malphite up top. He goes in. Oh my god. He's the Malphite. And. Oh, he's able to ult away to safety, just barely. So yeah, they're looking to get the Silas fed as fast as they can now that he has the advantage. And bot lane, I wonder how, this, how do you think this bot lane is going to be holding out now? Hmm. Bot lane does seem pretty even uh, in CS. Um, the plates are 
pretty even as well. Well matched uh, down here in bot lane. The Yone, he's really trying to take advantage of the CS difference. You can tell. If he can get the kill, then that's going to be a massive advantage for Nappers. Looking to go get the early Sunfire Cape, get some armor to defend against probably Yone and Azaya. The Silas goes in. He's able to force him out so he can collect that CS. So I'm looking for the Silas. He has almost all his mana up, so they really can go in and all in. Hecarim is up there too, so they really wanted to fight this. They can fight this. There's another fight in mid lane, however, the Yone. Really wants this kill. He isn't able to get it, so he has to retreat. That's unfortunate for Yone. Oh, the flash hook onto the Janna. At least he's able to follow up. The Janna alt comes in, pushes Thresh into his ADC, but it doesn't matter for the Janna. The Janna gets taken out, and Saya okay. has to fall back. The flash from the Silence also comes in. Oh, well there's two ult bombs that hit the Nocturne. Goes in, isn't able to get anything, uh, dies himself, and he gets his ult stolen! Oh my god! goes in and gets the Akali. The only able to escape with his life, too. What an amazing play for Nappers. Is <laughs> able to that get this mid mess. <laughs> Messy fight indeed. But like you were saying earlier, Swan, uh, the all in, just dive, dive, dive. That's what they're doing, and they're doing it really well. Okay, so with this advantage, they're going to be looking towards the Drake, so what DM needs to do is get this vision around this Drake, because if they can get this two Drake lead, then that would be massive and able for them to come back or get a, a better advantage than Nappers. All right, the TP comes in from Stylus, so he's able to help in this team fight. But Hecarim I'm just tanking a lot of damage from the Drake. Okay, so they confirmed the dragon. Let's see if they can go in on this team fight. They're not going to. They're just going to grab, let him get the scuttle and have him fall back. So it's a one-to-one -one Drake. And the next dragon will be Ocean Drake. Ocean. So how's Ocean Drake going to play into both of these teams? Uh, I don't put a very high value on Ocean Drake, actually. If there's a team fight going down at Ocean Drake, I would rather give the team the Drake and, and focus on other objectives like towers. Trade it off. Signal towers. It looks like bot lane's gonna get a lot of tower planing. So, oh, yeah. this map uh, control inside of mappers, it's actually really great. All of them push up to the towers. Not a single turret, only one turret plate taken on top lane. We can see the colleague try to go all in on the Yone. He's able to get out. But for how long? He's going into their own jungle. The colleague going in on that. Yone one. He gets the ignite on them. Looks like both of them are going to die. <laughs> the Yone dies, but the colleague lives. So ignite is able to expire. Turret plating for the side of DM, so. They are able to keep up with all this pressure coming in from Nappers. And what we're seeing, Swan, is sort of, again, that that repeat of the first game where Yone is dominating at first, but then the mid lane does turn it around slowly. And this is what we can be seeing from Akali soon enough. Pretty soon we'll be seeing Akali going in level 6, like dashing in the five different people getting that Penta. That's what I'm hoping from you. <laughs> hoping for you, what name? Oh yeah, we definitely want to see some Penta kills. Yes, yeah, so what a great way to start the season with a Penta kill. Ooh, wow, bot lane. Ooh, the Zaya is able to get out with her ult. She doesn't live though the janna is gonna pay for her life too trying to get that q off and it's only the zaya that's gonna fall actually oh unless the silas gets taken out the 
Kali barely living with her life too. Sorry, I'm having internet issues. So I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. So I like see half a team fight. And then the team fight's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after that, it looks like they're gonna be able to get some turret damage on that. And first turret is gonna go to the Yone, followed by the bot turret. So that's gonna be a massive advantage for the Yone. He got that first pl that first tower gold, and he's he can buy his first item, I believe. So that's already a massive advantage. Game. So how do you think the Akali can respond to this? Akali just has to roam. Akali can roam and get some kills on the Zaya or even Janna. Okay, looks like Yone is going to be going for Immortal Shield though. So he's able to have more sustain from his all-in. Oh, the hook coming in from the Thresh. And they here comes Akali. The if they can. Oh, the ult comes in. The Janna dies in the middle of it. The Kali getting that kill and is going all going in on the Zaya too. The hook misses, but it doesn't matter. The Zaya is able to get out. But the Kali up another kill. If she can keep up with this Yone, then it will spell troubles for Nappers. Oh, the hook! The hook on the Zaya. Another one. Here we go. The Yone out comes in and gets two. One is dead on the side of DM. The flash coming in on Victor. He's gonna fly out. Die to the Hecarim. The Hecarim's gonna get the double kill onto the Lucian. And the Nocturne falls also. An eight, almost an ace from the side of Nappers. This is looking great so far. More kills to Silas is great. More kills to Heck. How do you think DEM can come back from this? I would try to get that Malphite uh, online, um, get that Malphite into the, the team fights right in the middle of them. Okay, Malphite is just gonna get as much damage as he can. He needs to get out as soon as he can. The sun comes in on him from the side. He's gonna stay and fight this. The Hecarim is gonna come in and clean up that kill, so... Another kill going to Hecarim, he's, he's able to get that bounty. The Kali, however, oh, the Nocturne comes in too. He, the Yone is able oh, to escape he... <laughs> he escaped both all ends. He escaped both all ends with the, the bomb plant, or however you call it. I call it the bomb plant. Oh, yeah, that yep, the bomb plant. <laughs> oh, that Yone should have been dead. Well, he ocean lives. Drake he is coming up. Yeah, they're just gonna exchange that for the ocean. But the Lucian and the Thresh are able to contest this, so if they can buy time in the second room can get the Rift Hell, then they could have a massive advantage, push that top lane. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I would have Hecram drop that in mid lane and go over to Ocean Drake. That would probably be ideal. And we have a skirmish going down here. Uh, let's see. The hook comes in from the Thresh. The Akali is able to follow up on it. The flash comes out from Silas. He's able to get out, it looks like. Dione going all back in. He dies for that. But he's able to keep the Silas safe. So that's all that matters. Right, Malphite so is punching DM away on the top tower. DM can actually get this Drake if they wanted to. If they can figure out where the Hecarim is and kill him fast, then that's just an easy Drake. Looks like we are bunching up together near the Ocean Drake. Gotta be careful here. Well, they're trying to close in on this Hecarim. The Hecarim all comes in. He gets all of them! So the Hecarim <laughs> saves some space for his team to join back in and they can fight for this Drake. The Malphite and the Yone come in. The Yone gets in faster than the Malphite. Then the spike could go in the way of Nappers. They get the dragon. The Hecarim comes back in. He gets three of them. And my internet went oh. out. I don't know what happened. 
So it looks like DM did turn around that fight. Uh, Hecklum just cleaning up, uh, down and down a collie right there, and he is down that rift Herald in mid lane. Okay, so and... Napper actually feeding the Hecklum a lot more than I was expecting. They're gonna drop the rift Herald too and get this uh, turret and start pushing in on the base too if they wanted to. Yes, they are marching back into blue side base. Alright, so the inhib's gone. They just need to play for this Baron, get back, buy some items, and win the next team fight, and then that's the game. Okay, so let's see. How how can DM come back from this? Uh, DM is doing pretty well. They are up about 5k gold. Uh, Nappers, what they would need to do is get that Malphite more tanky. Uh, Malphite's been pretty bullied up top. Hopefully Thresh can get some good hooks in and either aim for Zaya or even uh, Silas himself lock him down and just capitalize on him with their dive comp. So, okay, so the Hecarim definitely needs to go down. If it can go to the Akali, that would be great and could make up for the deficit that Nocturne is behind, so... If Akali can keep up with the Yone, then they could still have a chance in this. You said the Thresh too. The Thresh? Have you, have you seen the Sooks? Victor Sooks is something? Yeah. They've actually been pretty yeah, amazing. Landing, he's laying the hooks just fine. He just needs to uh, land some in the team fights and throw down his ult. So it seems like the whole basis on the next fight is how Victor sets it up. Because he he's actually been pretty good with starting these team fights. Just the rest of his team needs to focus on one target and figure out who's the most important to kill right now. Who has the ultimate that could change the fight? Who needs to die right now? Well, right now, Janna needs to die, but she gets out with the whirlwind. The Hecarim comes in. He gets hooked back. Actually, he comes oh back. My goodness. He gets out with his R. Fiona comes in. The Hecarim gets finished off by Malphite. And the Janna falls right behind them too. The, Zon the Hourglass coming in from the Silas is able to get one, two, three down on the side of the um, four. Make that four nappers going in to the mid lane trying to push on the turret. Yes, Zaya was just in the back lane chilling as she was throwing home down her feathers uh, at everyone that she can see. And they are ending the game just now. It's one for one in the series right now. Let's go. Game three coming up soon. That was a uh, best of three. DEM just won those first two matches, correct? Wait, was DEM red? Yeah, DEM was red this match. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, <I'm not> <laughs> so yeah, we have our first okay. streams winner. First official winner of the season. Okay, yeah, there we go. My client's bugging out again. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for the viewers up. to watch it. <laughs> okay, yeah, are we still muted? Okay. Hi. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone yeah, enjoyed the match. Team. Yeah, I enjoyed them. Yeah, I mixed up the team, so that's my bad. DM actually did win. So they're 2 for 0 right now. 
going into the next week. And can we confirm the next day of matches for our viewers? Yes, the next match will be on Friday. I do not have the sheet up, so I can't say who's playing. But it looks Why? like it will be Flames of Darkness and Int and Steel, and that will be on Friday on right, this hopefully. channel. So hopefully we'll <laughs> see you guys there. Everyone, uh, remember to drink water and stretch some more. Uh, we've been sitting for a while, um, yeah, so we've got that blood flowing. <laughs> All right, I've been Sean. I've been Swan. This has been Nightwing. And the birds are signing off. Take care. Off. Okay, DEM is our first official league winner for uh, the post, or I guess real season. Um, so congrats, DEM. Great plays by Nappers as well. Uh, really excited to see what these games are going to hold in the future and what some of these team matchups are going to be like. Uh, huge thanks to our casters, Nightwing and Swan. Uh, we also had our overlays made by Advisor Mike tonight, so he did a great job on those. Uh, the big thanks to our moderator, D. Uh, and then I have been the streamer slash moderator in chat. Uh, my name is Austin, also Green Gaming. Hope you all have a great night. Signing off.